Hello everyone, I'm Dion from Dion Video Productions. In this video, we're going to be taking an introductory look at video animations in Final Cut Pro. Let's get started. In my experience, video animations are either commonly overlooked or overcomplicated. However, these are essential to know as they allow you to add a wide range of effects and transitions to any element in your timeline, whether it be video, text, or stills, without requiring any additional plugins or downloads. So with that in mind, this video is going to be split into three main sections. First, I'm gonna be showing you how to add animated text. Second, I'll be showing you how to zoom in and out. And finally, I'll be showing you how to incorporate animated stills or video on top of a pre-existing clip. Let's get started. All right, so what you see in my timeline here is a finalized version of what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna to go ahead and play this through and show you exactly what we'll be doing. Starting off, we have the title in the lower left thirds that comes in, and this is then followed by a zoom. And finally, we have the picture that comes in on the top left side of the frame. Now let's go ahead and show you how this is done, starting off with adding animated text. All right, so over here on the right in my timeline, we have an exact copy of the base layer clip that we saw in the first section, except of course, this one does not have any of the changes applied yet. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is adding a layer of text. Let's go ahead and click and drag a custom layer of text over the clip. Go ahead and close that, open up Inspector, and let's modify the text. Now in this case, I want this to be a title for the lower third. So I want this to include my name as well as my company name. All right, so I've just added in my name and my company name. Just gonna go ahead and change the color and then finally click and drag this to where I want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and position this into the lower left of the frame to serve as a lower thirds title. Great, so now as you can see, if we play this back, this will obviously just appear on screen. And while this works, it is by no means a smooth introduction to this element, right? It's kind of distracting having it just randomly pop up on screen. But of course, we can make this smoother through video animations. So to access this menu, the first thing you're gonna to want to do is select the clip to which you'd like to add animation in this case, the text layer. We're gonna go ahead and right click and select show video animation. As you can see, this will expand the element and show a bunch of different parameters, all of which can be modified and animated. Now for the text element, we're gonna be modifying two key parameters. That is the transform parameter and the opacity. So to do this, we're gonna make sure that the playhead marker is at the start of the element. And then over on in Inspector, under the Movies tab, we're gonna go ahead and start off by copying the x-axis transition. Now what I'm gonna to want to do is have the text appear on screen, like essentially swipe in from the left of the frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the pre-existing uh, position, which you can do by selecting and then pressing Command C. And then what I'm going to do is simply click and drag this until it is off the screen. There we go. It is now, of course, no longer visible. And at this point, we're gonna be adding our first keyframe. Now to add a keyframe, you wanna click on this little diamond shape, which you'll see on each of these parameters here. In this case, since we're uh, modifying the transform parameter, or more specifically, the position, we're gonna be selecting this corresponding keyframe. Once you've clicked it, a new keyframe has been added. You can confirm this by going back to the timeline into the text element, you'll see the same little diamond icon appear. This marks the first keyframe or the start of the transition. Now the next thing we're gonna to want to do is mark where we want this transition to end. So we're gonna take the playhead marker and drag this just a few frames to the right. Now let's bring the text back into frame to where we want it to end, essentially where we want this transition to end. So we're gonna take the previously copied coordinates and we're gonna press Command V to paste and press Enter. Now, since we've just modified this parameter at a different part of the timeline, you'll see a new keyframe has automatically been added. This marks the end of the transition. Let's go ahead and play this back and see how this looks. As you can see, the text now comes into frame and this looks pretty good. However, not as smooth as I'd like. Now, one thing I like to do as well, particularly with text, is play with the opacity, as this is a great way to further smoothen out the transition. So just like before, we're gonna make sure the playhead marker is at the start of the element. And then in this case, instead of the position tab, we'll go up to the opacity tab. Now we're gonna want this to start at zero. So before we add a keyframe, we're gonna click and drag this all the way down. And then we're gonna click the same diamond icon here to add our first keyframe. Now, once again, if we look at the clip, you'll see this new keyframe has been added, in this case, under the opacity tab. Now, just like before, we're gonna click and drag the marker here to where we want the transition to end. In this case, let's align it with the previous one and we'll bring the opacity all the way up. And just like before, it will have automatically added a new keyframe. Let's see how this plays back. 
as you can see this already looks much smoother now keep in mind this clip does need to render so it will look even better once it's rendered but even now you can see this already looks much better you'll see if i if i scrub through this frame by frame you'll see that the text is very opaque and becomes more filled as it moves into the frame Additionally, if you take a look at the inspector window, and if I go back frame by frame, you'll see the parameters change live as the video plays. All right, so now that we have a good introduction animation for this text element, let's go ahead and add an outro one too. So towards the end of the clip, let's move the playhead marker to here. We'll mark the start of the next animation. Now in this case, I'm just gonna go for a simple fade out using the opacity parameter. Now, once we have the marker placed where we want, we're gonna go back into the opacity menu and add a new keyframe. Then we're going to move it slightly off to the right, at which point we want the transition to end. And then we're going to drag the opacity down to zero. As you can see, both keyframes have now been added to the clip. Let's go ahead and play this back. Perfect. As you can see, I've made the transition of the outro a little bit longer than that of the intro. This is because, generally speaking, the outro transition can be a bit slower to make it more subtle. Now, in this case, you can alter the duration of the transition by simply clicking and dragging these keyframes to the left and right. As you can see, the further spread they are apart, the slower the transition, while the closer they are, the faster. In this case, I want it to be around two and a half times as long as the intro transition, and this looks pretty good. Next, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a zoom in and out effect through video animations. Let's take a look. So if we go ahead and take a look at the audio levels, you'll see that I start a new sentence around here. This is a great way to add a slow, smooth zoom transition. So let's see how this is done. Now, just like before, you're gonna to want to select the element to which you want to add the video animations, right click and select show video animation. And as you can see, a similar menu will appear with similar parameters. Now let's go ahead and drag the playhead marker to where we want the zoom to start. Let's say I want it to start right around here just after I said the first word. So now we're gonna go ahead and make sure that's selected, go into the same movies tab, but in this case, we'll go under the transform menu and under scale, what we're gonna be doing is moving this up. But before we do so, we're gonna add a new keyframe to mark the start of the transition. As you can see, the new keyframe has been added and next we're gonna click and drag the playhead marker to where we want the transition to end. Let's say around here. And now we're gonna go ahead and create the zoom. Now it's important to remember that in this case, you are of course doing a digital zoom, meaning that the further you zoom, the greater the loss in quality. If of course you're working with a 4K clip in a 1080p timeline, you have the freedom to zoom very far. But in this case, since we're working with a 1080p clip in a 1080p timeline as indicated over here, I don't recommend zooming far beyond 120% as at this point, the loss in quality will become visually apparent. However, something like 118% as you see here looks fine. So let's go ahead and see how this looks once I play it back. Not bad. Now, let me go ahead and move up a little bit. And as you can see, these two animations almost play side by side. So let me go ahead and move these slightly just to make sure that these are almost in sync. As you can see, I do want the zoom to be a little bit slower than the text disappearing. And let's see how this looks. There we go. So after some adjusting, we've made a very smooth transition. And as you can see, we've combined the two, the ones from the text, as well as the one from the zoom to almost create one seamless transition. Notice how the text disappears right as the camera moves in. This looks really, really great. And as you can see, it's done in only a matter of seconds. All right, so now that we have effectively created the zoom transition, the final thing I'm gonna be showing you is how to incorporate animated stills or a video on top of a pre-existing clip. Let's get to it. All right, so let's say in this video, I'm referring to a different YouTube video of mine, and I want people to click on that or to look at it for reference in case they want to watch it later. So in this case, I have a copy of the thumbnail. So we're gonna go into the events menu and we'll go ahead and click and drag that thumbnail on top of the pre-existing clip. Let's say we'll put it right around there. Now, of course, this currently is way too big. So let's go ahead and make this smaller. Let's say, 30% that's pretty good and then let's go ahead and reposition this here so let's move it to the top left so we'll just move it along the x-axis and then the y-axis as well let's say something like that and of course right now this will just appear on screen just like the text previously did it just appears and this works but of course I want this to look a lot better and we're going to make this smoother to a slightly different video animation in this case we're going to be altering both the trim and the opacity so just like before first thing we're going to want to do is right click and then and then select show video animation all right, so now that the playhead marker is at the start of the new element here, we're gonna go into inspector under the movies tab. And now we're gonna go under crop. 
and then we're going to select the right one. So now I want this to start off screen. So therefore, before we select add a new keyframe, we're going to click and drag this up until the thumbnail is no longer visible, just like that. At which point we'll add the new keyframe. As you can see, that has now been added. And now we're going to move the playhead marker just to the right to where we want this transition to end. And in this case, we can bring the crop on the right side back to zero. As you can see, this will now be entirely back in frame. Let's go ahead and play this back. There we go. Not bad. As you can see, it is not entirely smooth. It will be smoother, of course, once the clip is rendered, as it currently has not rendered yet. But even with that in mind, once again, I do prefer to also add an animation for the opacity parameter here. So just like before, we have, we're going to select the start of the, uh, of the clip here. Make sure it's selected. Bring the opacity down to zero. Add a new keyframe. Mark where we want the transition to end. In this case, I'll align it with the, uh, the uh, pre-existing transition. Bring it back up to 100%. And as you can see, this has now been added. Let's go ahead and play this back. There we go, that already looks much better. Now, of course, you can fine tune the timing a little bit, but I'm actually pretty happy with the way this looks. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom out, and I'm just gonna go ahead and play back from the start to show you what exactly we created. So after rendering, your project should look something like this. Here we have the title that comes in from the lower left. This is then followed by a smooth zoom transition. And finally, the additional element, in this case, a video thumbnail, appears on screen in the top left corner. All right, so this has been an introductory look at video animations in Final Cut Pro. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them down below. If you want more tutorials like this, I have a full Final Cut Pro playlist with over 35 different videos. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching.